So coming off at the end of the previous chapter, we see Shoji taking on Spinner and his heteromorphic army that are currently marching towards the hospital that's holding Kurogiri. Like their big mission here is to break him out of there for all for one, which I assume he wants to use Kurogiri's warp gate quirk to get himself out of UA where he is currently trapped and being beaten down by Izuku. And Shoji starts questioning them saying like, you know, are you just gonna disregard the safety of all the people in the hospital for what you're doing here? That doesn't really make you any better than the people that you're, you know, protesting and fighting against and he's like you know i swear if the answer is no i'll never forgive you and we see spinner can't even like comprehend fully what's going on here like he can't even speak right his eyes are like gone he's drooling he can't even like fully understand the heteromorphic army that's like cheering him on here and he's like uh no idea then we find out why spinner is so messed up here because we get a flashback of all for one giving him an extra quirk or at least i thought it was just an extra quirk because it appears that all for one gave him two extra quirks which is like insane because he says you know if you're going to use durability then this one should help scale armor it'll grant you raw strength heightened defense and the appearance of a true leader so i think he gave spinner a giant quirk like a quirk that makes him giant and then this scale armor quirk as well and like i said that's pretty crazy because he's basically turning spinner into like a nomu here and i think that's the point that horikoshi's trying to get across because he already had like the pupilless eyes and the drooling of the mouth and the tongue hanging out and, and the you know monstrous appearance and now that he has the scale armor coming over for him he looks you know like some version of like a nomu or something right and that goes back to like why nomus are like that in the first place because yujiko had to modify them so that they were capable of holding multiple quirks and i think that this is the most amount of quirks that we've seen a person hold in the series outside of like the one for all users all for one and then like you know nagant who had just two quirks but like the formers that i mentioned it seems like it's okay if you have just like two quirks i guess right it doesn't seem to put too much stress on you but once you start getting into having three quirks without like a modified body or anything then that's when you start to lose your mind essentially and i think that's pretty much what we're seeing with spinner here he's in the process of completely losing himself because he just has too much power too many quirks and this is like the big tragic aspect of spinner because he's essentially losing himself to this cause a cause that he's not even 100 fully on board with because he was originally doing this for Shigaraki like that's why he accepted to take these extra quirks in the first place because he was like it's all for Shigaraki because that's who he looks up to the most like originally Spinner was like ride or die for Stain that was like his introduction to the series like carrying on Stain's will but as that kind of like died off he found new purpose in serving Shigaraki and making him take over and whatnot because he looks up to Shigaraki he really admires him you know they have bonded as the series has gone on a lot of it off panel but we've saw some of it in the villain academia and towards the end of the first war we actually get this flashback of shigaraki talking to spinner saying that like oh you used to play league of legends me too though i always played solo and we knew that spinner was a gamer in that one flashback that we got of him but we also knew that shigaraki was a gamer as well and that that's what him and spinner bonded over because back in chapter 298 after all for one takes over shigaraki's body and does like the successful raid on tartarus you know they come back to this meeting point with the league of villains and it's at this point that that they realize especially spinner that all for one has taken over shigaraki's body and spinner says we got along more than i thought bonded over gaming and stuff it's like who are you you're not the guy i agreed to follow so it's like yeah it's just really tragic here that spinner is doing what he feels is the right thing like spinner had a hard life growing up just like shoji did that's like you know the big theme of this whole battle here it's that they both had hard upbringings maybe shoji a little more than spinner you know shoji going the path of being a hero spinner going the path of being a villain ultimately being used by all for one and it makes me wonder is like spinner even going to be able to survive this because you know in theory all for one could just take the two quirks back and then he would just i guess revert back to normal but it's like did he sustain lasting brain damage from this and if all for one doesn't do that or shigaraki then it's like how does he come back from this if he unless he just ultimately winds up dying here which would be really sad and tragic but i could see that happening but i think it would be more fitting if shigaraki or izuku if he winds up taking the all for one quirk you know reverts spinner back to being normal again or, you know, normal for Spinner. But going into the Shoji side of things, we're getting a flashback on him in this chapter, actually a couple. So the first one is that at some point we see that he actually revealed his face to class 1A and told them that like, you know, he comes from, as he says, a backwater village 
where pure blood was so important that they'd even take up arms to children to keep things pure. So that's why he has the scars on his face because he was straight up abused by the citizens of this village, which is, you know, awful. And it's been going into what we've been talking about, how in the My Hero world, like the cities are more progressive and accepting of the heteromorphs, but like the more rural, you know, backwater village or towns or whatnot are way more conservative. So like to a crazy point to where they're just like, we'll kill even children if they're heteromorphs. And since Shoji had these scars, that's why he decided to wear the mask because he didn't want people to think that he was out for retribution, which is like understandable. And then while he has like a ton of painful memories and, and no way that he can ever really forget them, he chooses to remember the big happy memory of his youth and that's when he was able to save this girl from drowning because of the quirk that he has otherwise he wouldn't have been able to reach her and in that moment you know he was overjoyed to have that body and i guess this is also what led him to becoming a hero ultimately like he realized that he can use this to save people rather than seeing it as a detriment that weighs him down and he embraces everybody and we have this nice moment and it comes back to the present where shoji reveals that his goal is that he wants to stop the prejudice in the world because he's like i don't think that over a century of prejudice will be over in our lifetime which is very true and realistic for sure but he's like he wants to become the world's coolest hero and then pass on that good memory onto the next generation and i think that's great it's just too bad that horikoshi has decided to reveal this at the very end here like for example we got kirishima's backstory way back in the overhaul arc and it's like he could have gave shoji this development sometime after that and i think it would have been better to build up characters like this throughout the story rather than just shoehorn it all in at the end but it is what it is i guess better late than never you know i'm just appreciative that he's at least doing this much but spinner hearing this still can't comprehend it because he's like losing his mind here and he's just like i don't care tear it down and he keeps going after shoji and i think shoji is about to like do his ultimate move or something because like suddenly like all of this flesh starts wrapping around his arm with like these eyeballs in it and spinner's like that's disgusting and shoji's like you know what can i say it's just who I am. And he's about to just nail him with like this huge fist thing. I assume it's going to be huge once he unleashes it in the next chapter. And this might be like his ultimate move or maybe even awakening or something. Because it looks like Coda is getting some kind of awakening or something too. Like he's sprouting horns from his head in this chapter as he's taking on that paranormal liberation front guy who I assume is going to be his final opponent. But yeah, that's pretty much where the chapter ends. You know, like I said, this might have a tragic ending here. I mean, I do think that there's some way that they're going to get Kurogiri out of that hospital because he kind of has to to get us to the next portion of where Shigaraki Sesh All for One is fully unleashed, but as for Spinner, it might be too late for him, but at the same time, I hope not because I think Spinner's a cool character and he deserves to be redeemed, I think, more so than Toga and Dobby. But let me know what you think is going to happen in the comments, guys. And if you liked the video, please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.